Proverbs mainly today. We're going to work through the book of Proverbs. It is Labor Day weekend. Kelly, good to have you here. If you weren't here last week, but Trey, good to have you guys. And Rob, evacuees from, from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Amen. Working this stuff out, trying to get, get ready. And again, we, we do celebrate J.J. and Naya. Same, that's a weird deal, isn't it? How do you plan on having both your kids' birthdays one year apart? On the same day. They were born on the same day in us. Uh, it's, it's September the 7th. Crazy. Mm. Proverbs 6. Those watching online, we thank you for tuning in. It's amazing how online is, is reaching people and connecting. It blesses this pastor, blesses the ministry of this church. We thank you for that. But I want to thank all those who put, have put in their time and energy to make, I believe, this is the greatest country on the planet. I don't care what I see on the news. America is the greatest planet, greatest country on the planet. The freedom to speak, to share, to voice my opinion, even when I, I think government can be wrong, I can still say it without any... Uh, a retribution or tyranny coming back to those who serve the Lord with gladness and they were making this again one of the best and, and I'm biased churches in the world today is Labor Day weekend it's a time to reflect we got people I know that are, are it's funny how Labor Day takes place and people take off it's a kind of a weird deal but it still has been that way I was talking to Pastor Mike for a guy here I said me and you've been through a lot of Labor Days we know that a lot of people are going to be gone it's a three-day weekend but I feel, I feel like in some ways we've been off for seven months Amen. There have been people that have been off for a long time, you know, not doing other things. But uh, personally, uh, I started working at age 12. You know, that's when I was able to get a job. I couldn't wait to get a job. I just wanted to go working, and I worked for a man. I was making 75 cents an hour. I was slightly, at the time, uh, lower than minimum wage. I, uh, the truth of the matter is, I started picking cotton when I was five years old. Five, six years old, I remember getting a jelly biscuit for lunch and a paper sack and going with my granny, Romy Mitchell, and we'd walk across the hill and go out in this field, and I drug a sack behind me that was twice as long as I was tall. I never filled that sack a whole day's work. You know, when I'm with Parker and these other teenagers, I think about myself. When I was young, I tried to fill it. I could not fill it. Or if it, The bigger it got, the harder it was to drag. They'd, they'd put my money in my hand, and I'd walk home as a proud young man with what little bit of change I had. Didn't make much. I think it was a great way to for my mom just to get me out of the house to be honest with you it had very little to do with the work but I do have that uh, little tag I can tag on myself I did pick cotton as a kid but you know you can't mention a five-year-old picking cotton that would be illegal to mention if you think about child labor laws so we'll just leave that alone next that take that off of the internet if you would <laughs> but I love the way I felt when I was rewarded I love that reward feeling even even now I'm 59 years old, and we just now started over the last six, eight months, uh, we get that direct deposit. Y'all know what I'm talking about with the money? I hate it. I despise it. I gave in to it, but I don't like it. I want to have the check in my hand. I want to go to the bank and decide how much I'm putting in the bank and how much I'm putting in my pocket. Amen. There's something about feeling the cash. I just like the reward of all of it. Forgive me if I'm old school. I just don't like that check going in like that. It just, but here it is. I ain't got no choice. And, and somebody called me the other day. And as a matter of fact, I gave my phone to my son. He, he knows how to make all that phone stuff work. I still ain't paid a bill on the phone. I have never received, ever, anything in the mail from Amazon or eBay. Yes, I am the only one. I don't know how to do it. But when the mail shows up, it's either Skylas or Natalia's. 85% of the time. They have figured it out. They know how to make this thing work. But I want to celebrate Labor Day. Amen. Diligence and the, and the fight in the spirit of, uh, of you know, I, I just can't let others carry us. We've got to do it. Are you comfortable? Matthew, uh, Proverbs chapter 6. I'm going to say Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6. We were, uh, Joseph and I were delivering the food over to this church in uh, Doritter. And on our way over there, Joseph looked over and as, it, as we saw the, 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 the work trucks, people working the, the lines, fixing water lines, knowing that we were there on the property. Moving around, he said, Pastor, have you ever considered the ant? And he starts talking to me about ants. Now, this is Thursday. Wednesday, I developed this message and put it together. This is what makes God so cool, isn't it? Amen. That he had no idea what I was going to preach, and I laughed at him, and I said, I'm going to preach a message on Sunday entitled, If an Ant Can, We Can. 
Everybody say, if an ant can, we can. Say it again, if an ant can, can. we can. can. If you're watching online, I want you to say, if an ant can, I said online. Y'all ain't got to say it. That's for them online. (laughs) We can. Even if an ant can, we can. Proverbs 6, 6 says, go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provision in summer and gathers its food at harvest. How long will you lie there this morning? You sluggard, when will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And poverty will come on you like a bandit and scarcity like an armed man. Now, I don't care what's going on in the world and America and other places when it comes to the economy. I look to the Word of God to find the right way to live. And it isn't always 40 hours a week. It isn't always 40 years out of your life. The Scripture tells us that for all of us, a little work. If, if you start folding your hands and giving in, poverty going to run over you. We rode by a church the other day. I was, I was heading out toward Conroe, and there was a church there that has disbanded. And I looked at the building, and already from the gutters, weeds are growing up from the gutters. Weeds are coming up around it. It doesn't take long for you to back away from something, and all of a sudden things start growing up around it. You've got to tend to it. You've got to look after it. So Proverbs says, consider the ant. Father, I thank you for your word. No condemnation this morning, but a whole lot of conviction. Bless us. Help us. God, we as humans, we got to fight this thing of being lazy at times. Help us, strengthen us in Jesus' name. And everyone said. Amen. Look at your neighbor before you sit down and say, he's going to be talking to you. Uh Uh-huh. Let me just talk about the ant real quick. And and as a kid, and I can promise you, probably every one of you at one time or another, and if you've got children, they're going to do it. When they see an ant hill, they're going to observe it. They're going to look at it. They're going to watch that ant carry a leaf bigger than itself. To lift it up. And they will pass each other. And the bigger the ant, the bigger the trails. You'll start seeing the trails. And you'll follow the trail to the ants. I, I remember as a kid, I, I was amazed at them. We got magnifying glasses, you know. And if you, That's a cruel thing to pop ants. I know that. It's, it's made for ticks, not ants. Hallelujah. But either way, you can look at that and see that, that little fella carrying things up trees and moving around. It doesn't seem like anything stops him. And, and you can pour water or you can try to destroy that anthill. Next thing you know, you got another anthill. I didn't know fire ants existed until I got to Texas. That's not an Alabama thing. Amen. So when I got to Texas, I got introduced to armadillos and fire ants. Didn't know either one. But man, when I found them, let me say this. When they found me, now they all jumped up on me and hit me at one time. I thought, my God, I don't know about this. It's a curse over here in Texas. Amen. But you try to kill one ant hill, and they got another ant hill, and it just keeps right on moving. Some lessons real quick. First, they don't need some superintendent over them. they got a natural desire to keep working. They know they need to. They get the essentials done first. Listen, catch this. I don't care. You say, well, pass. I don't know. Uh, can, can, go ahead, Mike. I'm already moving ahead of you. Uh, you you got to, to, to understand they get the essentials done first. In life, take care of the essentials. There are a lot of things in life, we, we, the little things, we, we try to take care of other things first. What is essential? Be, again, people ask me, Pastor, you must have been busy. I haven't been busy in years because one of the things I've learned to do is take care of the essentials in life. And if I take care of the essentials, the other things are going to fall in. Many old things, they're just going to happen, they're going to be there, but first take care of the essentials. Second, uh, next thing is they work ahead of time so they can relax later. I call it the domino effect. Work ahead of time. Now, this may not be on overhead, but you can still write it down. Amen. They work ahead of time so they can relax later. In life, you've got to realize that your work is so important that, that if I can work ahead, they store up so they can relax. I, I don't know when that relaxed time will come. Sometimes it's during the day that you work and relax in the afternoon. Sometimes in the week you get to rest on Sunday. Even in life, I know many look forward to retirement. And they'll tell me when they got to retire, they work harder now than they did when they had a job. Amen. But either way, learn how to push things ahead. Next, they do it without fanfare or applause. Has nothing to do with applause. Amen. I, just, I got to work because I got to eat. I came through a generation that canned stuff. You know what I mean by canning stuff? We, we grew our own garden. We picked our own vegetables, and you canned it, and you had it for later. It was always fresh. It was always good. Uh, it was an important. Today, we've kind of lost that little bit of a feeling. What happens if we don't follow their example? We continue to procrastinate. We begin to resemble a vagabond, and we ultimately become independent on others. Our nation, if it started reading Proverbs 6, if you took it to heart, it would change things in your life. Proverbs 13, 4 says, the sluggard craves 
and gets nothing. You remember the ant and the slugger is a comparison here. The slugger craves and gets nothing, but the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. To desire it and stay after it. What is it about planning? Get things done. Last few weeks I've asked you to plan. You got to get a plan if you're going to overcome. Proverbs 16, 3. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. Give it to God. Amen. Whatever that plan is, don't tell it to everybody, but give it to God. Proverbs 16, 9. In his heart, a man plans his course, but the steps, the, but the Lord determines his steps. In other words, I may have a plan to do something, but God says, <laughs> excuse me, that one out there is not going to work. I'm going I'm I'm to help you here, and I'm going to determine your steps. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 13. Do not love sleep. Do not love sleep, or you will grow poor. Stay awake, and you will have food to spare. You know, God gives us this wonderful thing called sleep to rejuvenate the body, right? And I mean, it's like, God gave that to me. Amen. I enjoy rest. I enjoy sleep. But if I don't do any work, I, it, sleep just seems to be something that, that the body will fall into, a little slumber. But man, after I work, I want to tell you something. When we got home Thursday night around 9, 30, 10 o'clock, after sleeping three or four hours Wednesday night after being fired up from the service, and then trying to go to bed, and then taking all them kids with, we had, we had some wonderful kids working with us, and then the adults said, all the work we had to get done. We were on our way home, when I got home. It was like I earned that sleep I got. It was a good feeling. You know, that kind of sleep is a good thing. for anyway, And even this morning, I woke up rested. But I called some of the, the, the elderly folk that went with us. I said, how y'all doing? One guy who I know gets up at 4.35 every morning, he told me, he said, Pastor, I got up in the morning, went back to sleep till 1.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> you know, your body's going to tell you that you need a little bit more help after a good hard day of work. But be careful. Don't love sleep. Don't fall in love with sleep. Proverbs 21.5, the plans of the diligent lead to profit. As surely as haste leads to poverty. So if I'm hasty about something, I'm going to get poor. If I make too many quick decisions and wrong decisions. But if my plans are diligent to keep working, profit is coming ahead. That's why I've never believed in lotteries or, or get-rich-quick schemes. I've been invited to do so many different things. I won't do them because I believe in, in slow and steady and diligent and working and dominant and staying on it, then I've always realized that God will bless me. But this enemy, it's an enemy. We all fight it. Everybody fights it. Procrastination. To put off intentionally and habitually. To postpone. To put off doing of something that should be done now. Listen, you don't have to keep griping at him to do something. He heard you the fifth time you said it. We all going to fight procrastination. Here's what I found out. Work is not a curse. It's not a curse. Our nation and other great nations were built by people who were industrious. There are those who believe work is a curse. Many, many dream of being free from work. Oh, when I can get free from Some even use scripture to bolster their point. You know, Adam and that woman in the garden, Pastor, if they hadn't messed up, we wouldn't have to work like this. Quit blaming it on her. Well, before, before you slammed them, before sin ever entered the garden, before there was ever sin, Adam had a job. i said this for years. Don't, you know, some, some girls, they fall in love with guys. Don't marry that man until he got a job. Adam had a job before he got his Eve. Uh-huh. You need to have a job. You need to have a career. You need to have something moving ahead here in your life. So don't, don't, don't get upset with him. Matter of fact, his job was to cultivate the garden. His job was to name all the animals. He had a task. God put him there. Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. The Lord God took the man, put him in the garden of Eden. What? To work. Everybody say to work. To work and to take care of it. God gave every one of us a garden, gave us a place to work and to take care of it. Amen. To look after it. Work, you know, if you can. If an ant can. I said if an ant can. Amen. Work is a privilege. There are people that can't work no more. Amen. Their bodies are shut down. They hurt. But they remember being able to work. They've worked their whole lives. It's a privilege to get to work. Second, work is a challenge for those discovering their gifts. The more I work, the more I find out what I should do and what I can't do. I watched these guys work on the roof and were roofing. I had a revelation. I am not called to be a roofer. 
Learned that 30 years ago, pole vaulting off a roof. Amen. Not called for it. Now, and I found out some other things. Was, so the teenagers, they had the same revelation after being up there with David. They, they ain't called to be no roofer, Pastor. Amen. It's good you found out when you were 15. Amen. Work is an answer to boredom. I'm bored. Go to work. I don't want to work. Then stay bored. Amen. But, but it is the answer to getting things done. Work is a place to invest one's energy, which in turn provides our own physical needs. Amen. The more I work, the more my body, my body made to work. Amen. And spiritually, in life, there is an active spirituality that takes work. It's, it's work to fast. To, fa- to not eat is work. Amen. To decide, I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to give some time to God. To pray. Many people don't pray because praying is work. I mean, you can watch all TV all day. You can do this all day. You can go outside and do physical labor. But to sit there and pray and concentrate and to think about the things of God, amen, and to call my name and your neighbor's name and other people and believe God for their best, it takes work. Amen. To give, to release that which you've been blessed with takes work. To let it go. I've worked for this. When I give my tithe, my offering, I'm reminded myself, I work for this. God gave me the ability to do this, so I release it. Uh, reading takes work to stay with it, to concentrate. And then there's building and maintenance in life. Amen. One of the things in life I realized, every church we've done, I was with, uh, I was with uh, Eddie this week, and, and we walked out of the church, and something was wrong with the septic tank, and I walked over there and looked at it. I said, Eddie, the one thing that I'm not called, that I know I wasn't called to do was maintenance. And it's all I've done my whole life is Maintenance. Amen. But thank God for the people that God has put in my life that know what they're doing to take care of stuff. Because it's not something I like doing. I don't like just maintaining stuff. But if you don't, it'll overwhelm you. The Scripture teaches us to be industrious. It is to be a Labor Day weekend to be people of diligence, committed to the task in life that need to be accomplished. But some consider, you know, Pastor, you know, spiritual growth, you know, it's just it's kind of a drag. You know, all I got to do is say a prayer and I get to heaven. No, 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 no. You got to walk with God. You've got to fight your Goliaths and your devils. You've got to stay diligent in life. You've got to press on. You know, you're right. You know, I, you, you don't have to always. I don't work because to get saved. I, I didn't go to Louisiana or Florida or anywhere else or work in our own churches to get saved. I did it because I am saved. I think to myself what my life would be like if it wasn't for Jesus. Because what I realized what Jesus did for me, it changed everything. Amen. It makes me appreciative of what I have. It makes me want to go help. It makes me want to work. It, I, it makes me fight this idea of being a sluggard. When I say the word sluggard, it's almost like saying a dirty word, isn't it? Amen. The scripture says, consider the ant thou sluggard. So it's, here's Solomon calling us sluggards if we don't work, if we don't press in. Now, I'm not going to call you that. I'm going to let the Bible do it. The sluggard has trouble getting started. Proverbs 6, 9, how long will you lie there? You sluggard, when will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come in like a bandit and scarcely like an armed man. Not only did my generation need to hear this from the last generation, but this new generation comes up needs to hear it from our generation. Amen. You can't live lazy. You can't just make it on mom and dad. you got to do something. Laziness focuses on the obstacles, the excuses that loom large on the front end of the task. It's amazing how fast things get done once you decide to do it. Carry the trash out. Make the bed. Back in the house. i got a man cave, and I realize it's my cave. <laughs> You know, after a while, when I realize ain't nobody going in there to clean it, it's my cave. And the other day, I decided I got my dog stays in there. My dog got hit by a skunk. They won't let him in the house. I let him in my room. You know, I've tomato juiced him down. But that's my job. I got to look after that dog. But, but I got in there the other day, and I turned on the light, and I saw hair everywhere. And so I realized this is my cave. I dread doing this. It took me less than 10 minutes to clean that cave. To dust it, to sweep it, to get it ready, to make it nice again. And I thought to myself, how many times do we dread stuff? But all we got to do is press into it for a few minutes and it's done with. I think the dread's worse than the work. Just go ahead and get it done. Make it happen. The sluggard is restless. They may have desires, but the trouble comes in implementing them. Proverbs 13, 4. The sluggard craves and gets nothing. 
but the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. Proverbs 21, 25, the sluggard's craving will be the death of him because his hands refuse to work. I want something, I want something, but I can't make my hands work. I can't make them work. All day long he craves some more, but the righteous give without sparing. Righteous will just keep right on giving. It's not uncommon for the lazy to be extremely skilled, creative people. They can be on street corners with signs. They can be in alleyways. They can be begging from the government and others. But they have tremendous skills. But they're lazy. Yeah, I said it. They're just lazy. Oh, y'all don't want to help me yet. They can dream and, and sketch out the game plan. But the discipline of pursuit is lacking. They crave and they get nothing. The slugger takes a costly toll on everyone. Have you realized just how much, and again, I know I'm going to step on some toes here, but the entitlements in America has cost us from people who refuse to work? I know I'm in the right church now. Proverbs 18, 9. One who is slack in his work is brother to the one who destroys. I'm not talking about people who are literally disabled. That's different. When you have disabilities, I understand that. I'm talking about people who've decided to play this thing. To work this thing. Amen. To what they call work this system. It destroys. Amen. It pulsates with liabilities. A lazy employee doesn't simply hold an organization or a church back. They also destroy its motivation and drive. A lazy player doesn't just weaken the team. They destroy its spirit and diminishes its will to win. A lazy saint doesn't merely limit a church. They destroy its enthusiasm, its passion to win souls, and, and their effect in the community. I'm telling you, if we're going to be effective, whether it be our conference or our, our car show or our weekly services, we need enthusiasm. Yes. Amen. I was, I was blown away how, how excited y'all got that there was somebody up here that was excited. <laughs> Amen. Y'all some. I mean, I'm talking about Tuesday night with Eddie up here, and I'm thinking, I, I can't do that. Amen. I wasn't made that little. I wasn't made to move like that. If I try to go down like he did, I'll never get back up. <laughs> Amen. But it was amazing how it affected, because enthusiasm and passion is contagious. Amen. It affects you. It blesses you when you got there. You know, before long, even our great nation must do more to compensate for the sluggard's negative influence. There's been, and, and you can call it whatever you want, but the scripture calls it sluggards. It calls it lazy. And when you're lazy, look, you know, if you work 45, 50 years, you deserve your retirement. If you've been disabled, I understand. God bless you. We've got a great nation and a way to help people. But if you're just playing the system, you need to consider the ant. Amen. Who works hard to make sure he got something left over in the wintertime. The sluggard is usually defensive. Proverbs 26, 16. The sluggard is wise in their own eyes. than seven men who answer discreetly. You ever try to rationalize with a lazy person? My goodness, they got more, you know, I, 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 well, this and that, and they make up this. They got excuses for that. The sluggard is a quitter. They don't quit when the going gets tough. They quit before the going gets started. <laughs> Amen. They didn't even want to get going. Proverbs 12, 27. The lazy man does not roast his game, but the diligent man prizes his possessions. A diligent man will skin that deer, skin that hog. They'll take parts and pieces off of there. They'll roast it. They'll cook it. They'll take that time. But, but the lazy, they won't, they won't even cook their food. Amen. They're they going to open a can of pork and beans and eat it cold. Got a microwave right in front of him. Don't know, won't even use it. He, you know, listen, and I was brought up, if you kill it, you eat it. You didn't shoot something unless you're going to eat it. I was out with a brother-in-law once up in Utopia, Texas, and we were out there seeking the Lord. We went out in the mountain on the hillsides. I didn't realize how cold it got at night. We brought a blanket and a pillow. We were sleeping on the ground. I had a 22 rifle and a stick. I had a stick. He had the gun. We out there, and he's, he's on one side, and I'm on the other side of the hill, and we're going to tell each other the revelations we got from God. Y'all ain't never been this spiritual. I know that. Y'all ain't never done it. But we got over there, and we got to pray, and we pray and seek God. And I was a young Bible college student. I said, Lord, what are you going to do in my life? Yada, yada, yada. And all of a sudden, I heard some rustling. When it's, you've never seen how dark our utopia dark is. There ain't no lights out there in Leaky and Utopia. It's just dark. It's black dark. All you see is the Milky Way. And I'm out there. And I hear rustling. So I go running over to here. John! John, there's something out here. And he said, yeah, I think it's an armadillo. Be, be quiet. And he, he started chasing that armadillo across the hills there. It run down. And right before it went in the hole, he shot it. Amen. I got a stick in my hand. I don't know what we're chasing. Again, I'm a young boy from Alabama. I don't know what's going on here. I just got out here to Texas to find out what's going on. And, and, we sh and he shoots. And we reach down in that hole and we pull out that armadillo. And John looks at me and says, what do we do now? I said, well, we shot it. We got to eat it. 
You hungry? I'm hungry. And we're just city boys, I mean country boys, and I say, I'm hungry. So we take that possum on a half shell. And we skin it out. And we pull the meat off of it. We slip over to Brother John's house. The prophet, he was out of town. That was uh, Grandpa. Amen. And, and, and we, we take that meat and we dip it in a little bit of flour and a little bit of milk and we throw it in the grease. But we cook it up. Because, you know, our rule was you shoot it, you eat it. So we cook it up. I'll be honest with you. I'll never eat armadillo or shoot one again. I just, just ain't going to do it. I learned my lesson well that day. Hallelujah. This ain't going to happen. But here it is. Scripture says they would rather focus on why something can't be helped than blame the government. You know, in our lives, many times we, there's this blaming. You can blame our government. You can blame the church. You can blame your family. But sometimes the answer is on you to get up and make things happen. The sluggard lives by excuses. Proverbs 22, 13. The sluggard says there's a lion outside or I'll be murdered in the streets. Proverbs 26, 13. The sluggard says there's a lion on the, in the road, a fierce lion roaming the streets. Hear me. There is maybe a lion somewhere, but it ain't in Texas. And to make excuses up all the time about things in life, amen, is wrong. The scripture goes on to say this. As a door turns on its hinges, so a slugger turns on his bed. Whenever I see this, read this, I have this picture of hanging on the bed and hitting the snooze. And rolling. And nine minutes later, it's nine minutes, right? Rolling back over and hitting the snooze. And it goes off again. And Read it again here. As the door turns on its hinges, so a sluggard turns on his bed. The sluggard buries his hand in the dish. He's too lazy to bring it to his mouth. See, I've always felt like if you hit that thing more than twice, you're in sin. You know, you get grace in first two times, but don't hit it again. After that, you're in trouble. You need to get on up out of that bed. Amen. How do you defeat laziness? You got to start today. The ability to plan is unique to man. No other creature that I know of plants has plans like this. The, the ant understands harvest, understands seasons, and does that. But this ability to plan. To man belong the plans of the heart. But from the Lord comes the rely of the tongue, the reply of the tongue. We have a built-in capacity to think things through, to plan things out. You know, I want me to say to you, you have been through hurricanes and floods and things in your life. Do you know when we knew that thing was coming a week ago? That we had made a plan. We got stuff up out of the... Didn't we, Charlie? Amen. Everything in the, in the property was setting up. Amen. We had generators out. We had fuel we'd already went and bought. We were planning for it. Our cars were full of fuel. Our vehicles were up. I mean, everything was about... We made a plan. Now, there are times things sneak up on you and you ain't got time. You ain't got time. But when you have time, when you have opportunity, you need to make a plan. You know what's coming. Amen. And in life... You know there's going to come a day that you're going to retire. There's going to be a day when... And so this is I'm preaching to the preacher now. One of the things I never had done as a young man was plan for retirement. I never dreamed I'd be this old. I'm not lying to you. I never dreamed I'd be this old. So now I'm getting to a place where now I've got to start deciding how I'm going to... How, and, and will there be a... In my life, I don't see it. I see preaching until I'm dead. If God will give me an opportunity, amen, I'll preach till I'm dead. I'll stay on it. Because I have that ability to do that. You mean, I don't have to let it go. But here's the thing in life. To man belong the plans of the heart. Solomon also affirms we can have the desire to get things done. We also have divine assistance available. Commit to the Lord whatever you do. And your plans will succeed. I'm going to take that as the word of God. We send a young man off in the, into the Marines. He's committing himself to the Lord. I believe his plans will succeed. I believe in life, once you commit something to Him, your plans will succeed. I'm going to commit, to, I'm going to give this to you, God. Amen. Then I think of the scripture, go to the ant, consider His ways, and be wise. If an ant can, we can. Amen. If an ant can figure this thing out, we can. So this is my thing. God, forgive me for being lazy. Forgive me for giving the excuses that my body at times is, you know, I've, I've used my muscular dystrophy as an excuse. I've used my education as an excuse. 
I've used my lack of certain abilities as an excuse. And I find that God, if I keep pressing and I keep moving, that you'll forgive me my sins and you'll give me a, a straight plan out there to make things, to get things done. Amen. My question to you is, commit to the Lord whatever you have and your plans will succeed. What plans do you have? What plans to overcome? I got a plan in January. I stayed with it. This is the longest I've ever stayed since I've gotten older to make my body healthier. Amen. I've been working on it, working on it. I stay on it. I get up 11.30 at night and take a walk because I hadn't got to walk that day. Scare my neighbors. Amen. They thought I was Sasquatch the first time I came through there. Commit yourself. Amen. What plans do you have? This morning, I believe you to be born again when you love God. If you're young, you need to have a plan. You need to get some plans. Commit them to God. My kids, man, I just want my kids to have plans. I want them to have a future. I want them to see. I want my grandkids to pick up on it. I want your kids to pick up on it. Amen. And I want you to consider the ant. Not fire ants. Those aren't. Those are from hell. <laughs> They spewed right out of hell. I promise you. Amen. That's, what, that's a trick of the devil right there. But them other nice ants. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The nice ants. Consider the ant. I don't think they were. I don't think David. I don't. Solomon and David. I don't think any of them had fire ants over there in Israel. I can't prove it yet. But I, I just have to believe they didn't have them. Amen. They had little ants with halos around. Not them horns. Heads bowed, eyes closed for a moment. Those watching online, thank you for... You know, it's a Labor Day message. What do you expect on Labor Day but to labor? Remind yourself not to procrastinate, not to put off the things we got to get done. The things that, you know, it, 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 it can be delayed. But I live on a piece of property that I promise you that if we don't work it, it's going to overcome us. So we take care of it. We look after it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we commit our plans to you. Our future. Lord, we have plans of success and succeeding. But help us understand what, what job is it? What career is it we're going after? What is it we're going to do after that job and career is over? How will we make a difference before we leave this planet? How little by little will we see things get done? God, I thank you for your people. We're an industrious church. We've built. We've made things happen. God, I thank you that you've allowed me to pastor God given wisdom as we move forward. I thank you for this house and your blessing upon. I say blessing to their business, to their employers. I say blessing and, and doors opening, God. I say for success to them and success to the kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a praise before we walk out of here. It would break my heart. It would break my heart not to be able to give. I don't say that because I'm your pastor. I, I, so on, on, uh, as soon as I got my check on Thursday, I wrote my tithe check out. Took that check and I wrote my tithe check out so I could give it. There's something about that to me that shows that, God, you gave me the ability. I, I may get to a place someday where this body don't move anymore. It don't work anymore. You know, my hamstrings are hurting. And, and, uh, you know, but that just comes with work or, or the fact that you ain't worked much. Amen. Now you so Why are you so? Because you ain't been working. Amen. Some folk can work and, and can handle it. But I, I have to keep pressing this body and keep moving on. For those of you, you just got to find what it is that God put a passion in your heart to do. Mine is to win people to Jesus. Amen. I want to see more folk one to Christ. And I, and I don't have to be the one to do it. If I could just convince you, we double this church in a year. Hey, I, I mean, just be blessed by it. Because well, everybody needs Jesus. Amen. I'm going to tell you, when I got that phone call, I can't tell you any more about that call or who it was it called, but I was shocked. I was shocked when I saw who it was. Amen. Because this is somebody I may have talked to two or three times my whole life on the phone. So I was blown away by it when I got it. But what a testimony. What a blessing. Amen. There's envelopes around your chairs there. Amen. Act like it. Even if you're not even written. I think it's up there on the front. Is it right? 
Is there a tithe envelope? Just act like you're leaning up and get it. Just make me feel good that you're leaning forward. Amen. And if you give it on your phone, give on your phone. Hallelujah. But everybody in the house be a giver. This first, first it's already September. Our conference will be called Overcoming 2020. Pastor Kenneth will be some. You know what? He's going to be able to preach it now. He, he got plenty of material now. Amen. He told me the other day, he said, Pastor, I only got two sermons. I said, split them in half and preach all week. Amen. We'll, we'll listen to you. I said, but listen, I, I preach six, four times a week for six years. I know you can do it once. So it's going to be a great conference, Muscle Car Sunday on the 27th. There are some sign-up sheets in the back. I know, they're, uh, Dana, they're for the desserts and things like that, I think, back there. But, uh, and we'll get the tractors uh, next week. We'll make sure we get all the sign-up sheets, particularly if you're new here. Hallelujah. This is a great way to get broke in, to come be a part of something I believe is going to win people to Christ. Um, I don't think we, can, we can't get tired of it yet. We've got to keep, we've been doing it for 20 years. Amen. Blessing people. Amen. This is the, the Muscle Car Sunday shirt. Amen. Stay in your lane. Uh, they're for sale in the back. Amen. So that's this week. They're for sale. Later on, we'll have for sale gators. We had gators made. It's got a lion face on it. Amen. If you want to walk into, I, I don't want to buy a mask. I don't want to promote this. Uh, if I say hoax, it sounds like I'm being disingenuous. Yeah, I know people have died from this, but it is, again, well, all we did was name a flu, whether it's N1, H1, SARS, whatever. It's just a flu, but it can tip people over the edge. Understand that. There's something going to tip you over. But I wanted gaiters. You know what a gaiter is? I can wear it when I'm on my motorcycle. I can wear it when I'm out mowing grass. I can wear it when I get cold. In other words, I can always have it. It'll work good. And then I got something to just say holy wild on it. Amen. So you can have one of those later on. We'll, we'll put those out for sale. David, if you come on up, everybody got your tithing offering ready. God, I tell you, hey, guys, good to have y'all back. I forget your names. Y'all here last week, but friends with my friends. So I love to having you guys here. Amen. Justin, I love the goatee. It's thick, man. It's thick. Look behind you if you want to see thick. Look at Dusty right there. That's thick right there. Right. A couple of announcements. Um, now till uh, Muscle Car Sunday, there's going to be a fundraiser. It's for the Coke donations. Uh, donate all kinds of Cokes for kids to sell during Muscle Car. All proceeds will go toward getting the kids to camp. See Marley or Randa for details. Uh, now till uh, Muscle Car barbecue donations, please donate money into the crock pot. Do we have that crock pot out yet? Okay. Next, next week, we'll have it out. We just need to come up with some money for the uh, barbecue, obviously. We've got to order all the pig butts and everything else. So uh, September, every Tuesday night, uh, two or more prayer meeting, every Tuesday night at 7 p.m., except for the first Tuesday when we have our first week midweek. Uh, and then that will be with HD. September 13th, Swap Seniors with a Purpose Bible Study. Uh, after service at 10 a.m., see the riches for details. If you guys have any questions, see the riches over there. Uh, September 19th is going to be Acoustic Night. Uh, it's a live concert Saturday night in the Tabernacle at the, North, at the New Candy Campus. At 7 p.m., pay $10 online through uh, Eventbrite for tickets. Matt Baird and Zana? Zana. We're going to go with Zana. I have no clue. Um, September 20th is the Lift Ladies Bible Study. After uh, service, see uh, Miss Diane Phelan. September 27th, TLCC Kitchen Crew needs cookies and brownies and single serve baggies for uh, muscle car sign ups are in the back. And they are actually in the back. I did put those out there. I saw those. Uh, October 4th through the 7th is the 2020 Fall Conference. Like he said, it's overcoming 2020. Uh, we've had plenty to overcome this year. So thank you, Lord. It's almost to the end. And we're just praying that it gets better. <laughs> yeah, it's over. We're done. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for the gift and the giver in this house. And we just give you a praise for the fact that, Lord, we have the ability to give. That, Lord, there is uh, increase in our lives. And so out of that increase, we give back to the house 10% or more just to say that, Lord, we love you, we trust you, and our faith is founded in you, Lord. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Today as we give, we're giving for...
Jobs and better jobs. More money, less hours. Benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor, success to the kingdom. Thank you guys. Don't forget to pick up your wonderful children.